Is that a late night Elden Ring stream? Yes, it is. Hello, folks. As you might have known, I'm at that point in the game where I am actively looking up. <laughs> what, uh, no, not necessarily what to do next, but just what to do. I'm at that five point fork in the road. It's like, okay, I know where I can go to finish the game, but I know there are a lot of other directions I can go right now to do some things that I want. So, that's where I am. Okay. Just updated my computer. So, hopefully, I know I'm a bit dark in this. I'll have to change that later. But hopefully, that will help with um, whatever issues I was having with the camera. We'll see. If it freezes, then I know we have a problem. So one one of the quests we're on right now, uh, we're on two major ones at the moment. Uh, one for uh, Gold Mask, uh, and one for Ronnie, the sorcerer, sorceress, it's magic lady. All right, so let's go see Gold Mask, who doesn't talk, by the way, but his uh, his faithful companion does for him. Gold Mask just points and says nothing. Uh, and we, turns out, uh, we never did find, we, we never did find Blythe, uh, but it turns out we didn't really need to. Uh, I, this was before I started looking up stuff, uh, all you really need to do is after you do your stuff in, uh, Nakron or whatever, uh, in the underground area, you just go back to Ronnie's tower and she's awake and you talk to her and she's like, Oh, thank you. I am off uh, on my own journey. Then you, uh, and she's like, I'm going to take the portal from the other tower over there and uh, go on my own little adventure. You follow that portal and you find this right on the other side. Where are you? Where are you? A little doll of Ronnie, a doll resembling Ronnie the witch. From head to toe, every detail's perfect. The chilliness is gone, feeling now like an empty husk. There is no response. So it was a different, it was like alive looking earlier. Uh, so she's like, yeah, you you sit at a bonfire close by and you try talking to it three times. Hey, what's up, Scott? <laughs> Sweet, how you doing? Hey, Clover, how you doing? Oh, just lovely. I'm just kind of walking through uh, what I what I did off stream. Uh, so at that point, uh, we sat at one of the sites of grace and tried to communicate with the doll like three times. And of course it didn't talk the first two, but on the third one, it's like, okay, yes, it's me. This is Ronnie inside the doll. I thought I could hide it from you. Uh, if you would go destroy some of these, uh, phantoms for me. So you go and walk along that path and you see... It looks like one of the invaders, you know, they're, they're all red and black, uh, just like someone invading your world, that kind of, like, uh, very unique, tough enemy. Uh, but it looks just like Blythe, really interesting. I don't know if it was supposed to actually be him, or, or if it was like a, uh, like a shade of him. But we defeated him, and we got a key, and that key unlocked a treasure chest, and, uh... Uh, what's what's her name? The the full moon queen. It unlocked a treasure chest in this lady's tower. Uh, I want to say her name was like Rolana or something. Ranala. Yeah, pretty much. She wasn't super scary. But like we we already knew who it was who was in possession who was possessing the doll. Uh, so we did that, and she I guess she left the doll. Like she's no longer possessed no longer possessing that doll. Uh, so we're near the end of that little quest line. Another thing that we did, um, we went to Fia, the deathbed companion. Uh, we talked to her, to her for a little bit, and she transported us to this boss fight with a dragon, who we defeated. And uh, after defeating it, she gave us this uh, here, I'll show you. It's got it's in my inventory. It's a key item. It's one of the... Here you go. This mending rune of the Death Prince. 
it's one of the items that will give you one of the five or six endings of the game. Uh, so depending on how you want the game to end, what ending you want, uh, it's a pretty cool way they're doing with doing it with this one. Um, like you get to kind of decide what your ending's gonna be if you have the prerequisites. So we got at least two possible endings right now out of like five. Uh, and uh, after after she gave us this, uh, we left for a bit and came back, and the brother of D, just the letter D, that was what he called himself, the guy that Fia killed came back and took vengeance, avenged his brother and killed Fia. So she's dead. And then uh, after he did that, he either killed himself or he just left the armor and sword that he had next to her body. Because the next time we visited, all that stuff, all the armor and the sword he had was there. Uh, the way he spoke, it was almost as if he had completed his... He had avenged his brother, and that's all he really cared to do. So it almost feels like he either killed himself or just wandered off to die. But uh, considering how bleak that place was, and that he left all his clothes, essentially, and his weapon, like, I think he was not long for this world. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that's the From Software games. There's a lot of death. There's a lot of death and madness and sadness and all, all that stuff. Um, and so now we're on, uh, we haven't finished Ronnie's quest. We're near the end of it and we'll get there. But, uh, now we're on the quest for Gold Mask, one of the other, um, one of the other Tarnished, who doesn't speak. All he does is, like, make signs and point. Uh, but his companion kind of speaks for him. Uh, and I think we're near the end of that one. So, I'm making my way to get to the next part of that quest right now. Hey, you! I'm gonna Kamehameha you. Hold on. Take this potion real quick so it can do unlimited magic for a short period of time. Check this out! Blah! <laughs> uh, it, took, it took so many levels to be able to do that. But, now I'm there, and it's freaking awesome. I, dude, like the dragon that I had to fight after talking to Fia, I took out like two-thirds of its health, and it was huge. It was, it was like a, yeah, it was like a three or four story dragon, but yeah, this combination of, uh, potion effects that I have going on, plus, uh, my high level of magic and this specific spell, this just a several hits one after another beam is, oh, it's so good. It doesn't work on every boss. Some bosses are really, uh, not immune, but have a have pretty high resistance to magic. But uh, I feel like most most minor enemies, like that dude, even though he was tough, uh, are gonna go down pretty quickly with that. All right. So, was that you? Yes, it was yes, me. the master is still ceased, and after coming all this way, why now? So, what were y'all up to? Were you doing more streaming, Scott? Oh, hey, Yalza. I, I didn't see you there. Your your name was the same exact color as uh, Clover Halos, so my bad. <laughs> All right. Who exactly was Radigan? The master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name. That's was Gold Mask, the guy who doesn't talk. the answer why must these qualms come to you now we were on the very cusp hmm. oh did i not Who exactly ah darn i was supposed to go touch there? a message that's fine i'll just warp right over there uh, i revealed the message apparently and then i needed to uh read it which i didn't read it silly me i thought i did but i didn't okay so we go down this way, and there's a statue. I had to make it change its position by doing a uh, specific incantation. 
which I, I tried so many. The thing was, you have to stand at a very specific spot, which I didn't know, and they kind of spell it out for you. Uh, but even then, I don't think I tried that uh, specific incantation. Let's see, I'll show you where I have you have to stand. There's this incant, not this one. Okay, this one I think. Ah, okay. It was a it was one that was around here, but I think it's gone now. Incantation required ahead. Yeah, we already did that. Radagon is America. Oh my god, that's interesting. So I think that's the message we had to read. But I had to stand about in that area and do a specific uh, miracle magic move. Uh, and the statue changed to its current form. It used to be more uh, arms, like hands facing down and head upwards. But uh, so interesting. Uh, that's new information. Radagon is, in fact, America. Hmm. Very interesting. All, all the other lore so far has said that they were a married couple, but they're the, one and the same person. Okay. Because we never get to see these two, America and Radagon. They're they're treated as like long ascended divinity. I think I probably want to go down to this spot, actually. Yeah, that'll take us there quickly. Uh, what is... Uh, what are you making with your mask? And what is, uh, EVA? Eva. Eva. Eva? Do, 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 do. I happen to have the same mask that Gold Mask is wearing, by the way. Look at me! I'm a Gold Mask, too. <laughs> I'm gonna put my antlers on. Those are fun. Oh, hi, friends. I don't... Ow. That wasn't kind. You're not a friend at all. I'm gonna get summon some meteors. Enjoy that. Wow! Don't try to grab me. It's a type of foam that sort of blends with heat. Oh, bends with heat. Right on. That's cool. Oh, that's awesome. A May mask. A May May mask mask. Wah. It's possible that that's the same. I don't know. I'll... I forget what kind of foam or what kind of material it was, but I, I got a Majora's mask, a very wonderful quality one too, from uh, Etsy for my hubby. Uh, for the, for Christmas, and oh, it looks so good. Here, actually, I'll, let me let me find the link. I'll put it in the in the chat. Etsy. Let's see Etsy. And let's see what material this is made of, real quick. I know it says it. Learn more about this item. Polyurethane. All right. Polyurethane resin. Yeah, it's this one. Oh, love their style. They they give it this wonderful wood grain look. Like, it looks like it could actually be made of wood. Just the artistry on display here is incredible. It's expensive, though, as you can see in the, in the link. That's why. Hey, Layla, how are you doing today? Or tonight? It's late. Just enjoying some... New Dark Souls, some Elden Ring. Oh, that's so cool! Awesome! I made a split guardian mask. I hope you saw it. That's really cool. Alright, let's relay this info. Oh, was that you? It was yes, me. The master is still ceased. And after coming all this way. 
why now of all times? All right, buddy. Here we go. Who exactly was Radigan? The master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. But oh, how important could it really be? It's America. The tree, heart of the golden order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these quarrels oh, lovely. Thank now? you. We were on the very cusp. Dude. Who exactly uh, I, I told you who it was. Is there anything else I need to do? Following the guide at this point. I'm pretty... I know I've said it several times at this point, but, like, I'm pretty much at the point in the game where... I know where I need to go to finish the game. Uh, like, that's where... that Yeah, I'm at that point where... I know where I need to go, but there are several small, like, side missions. Like, there's, like, a fork in the road of, like, five different directions that I could be taking. And I've been just racking my brain trying to figure them out. So, yeah, I'm at that point where, okay, now I'll look at a guide. I've done so well up until today. Finally, today was the uh, breaking point. I've been playing this for a week and a half, and, like, sure, I could finish it. I could have finished it, but uh, I've put so much time into this game already. I want to have all the opportunities opportunities that I can to finish the game that in the direction that I want to. Uh, and I'm glad I looked, because the way that this game works, uh, you essentially can collect a handful of different items and then kind of choose your ending at the very end. Uh, but you have to have those items. And it seems like I'm right at the point. If I had made, if I had went one step further along the main storyline, I would have lost that opportunity for at least one of them. So, that's nice. Yeah, right? <laughs> I totally get it. All right. Yo. All right. Ah, there we go. Tell him that Radagon is Merica. Now you know, friend. Golden Order Totality. Okay, so now he knows. What on earth did you do to the Master? Well, not that I'm complaining. Master's finger moves again, resuming his cogitation. More than good enough for me. I haven't the words to thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So I'd like to pass this on to you instead. A glimpse into the heart of the Golden Order. Documented by yours truly. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, let me afford that real quick. That'll get us there, I think. Oops. Cool. Increase left hand shield's affinity and alignment resistance. Or ailment resistance. That's cool. He's teaching us some incantations as we go about. Study of incantations, if indeed I have... Anything else, better, buddy? I think that Radigan was Marika herself. Or at least such is all I can interpret from the rhythm and calculus of his finger. How would such a thing even have been possible, I wonder? Hmm. Well, sadly, I cannot comprehend it myself. Do you have a fuller understanding of the matter? Not really. Oh. Well, either way, I can continue my documentation. In truth, it matters very little whether I understand the Master's thoughts or not. I am merely his scribe. <laughs> it is my sole and unwavering purpose. Oh, like, I, my impression was, uh, like, I, I find it completely understandable that the internet was taken with Spampton, because he is like the internet incarnate, right? He, he's the man, he's the man of the internet. <laughs> All right, so now that we have set them on the, the path that they're wanting to go on, where to next? All right, brother. We want to go to ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba 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 -ba. gotcha all right we want to go to this spot and we're gonna want to ride around and go to the bridge south of these ruins 
By the way, this game is friggin' fantastic. And the fact that it's... Like, it, it, it lends itself so much to exploring and just taking your time and... Oh, and it... Like... When Breath of the Wild came out, it was such a game changer for open world games. Uh, but it, like, especially with a climbing mechanic, which is not present here, sadly. But, uh, like, Nintendo really knocked it out of the park with that mechanic. But so many other elements just, uh, just came to rightness with that game. But at the same time, there were a lot of, uh, like, healthy criticisms of it. Like, ah, uh, you know, I would like the dungeons to be better. I would like there to actually be dungeons. Like, uh, it felt like the only real Zelda-like dungeon was maybe Hyrule Castle. This game took that criticism to heart and made some fantastic dungeons that blend seamlessly with the rest of the, uh, with the rest of the open world. Uh, several really like difficult and confusing uh, side quests there they are uh, and yeah just just a you know more more challenging experience overall uh, and a lot of fun fun lore and characters yeah right right yeah that, that's totally understandable like open worlds aren't everyone's vibe it's totally understandable it's 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 a big time sink for sure uh, and, and this one, like being a, uh, from software game, you, you go into it knowing that it's going to be pretty difficult. It's, it's Dark Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls as an open world game, essentially. Uh, different, different universe, but same feel, same overall feel, you know. Um, one of the other things that Breath of the Wild ended up being... Uh, constructively criticized for was uh, mo much of their music just going through the overworld was uh, ambient which is beautiful I really like what they did there uh, like a couple piano keys here and there maybe some uh, light cello or something uh, but I think it's mostly just a kind of light, light plucking at the piano uh, which just kind of yeah illustrated like the passing of wind or the falling of, of leaves that kind of thing it worked really well for the world but it was a fair criticism for people to be like there's not enough Zelda music in this there's not enough call to adventure sound to this game uh, so I, I feel like I feel like this one has done an interesting job of making relatively unintrusive music but still giving you a soundtrack throughout the whole game like there's this you can hear it now there's like just this soft drone of music and it changes depending on where you are like there's this there's this one place uh called uh Khaled, this area that's full of like disease and rot and i really love the atmosphere there because it's unsettling and like the hair stand on your neck when you listen to the music and it sounds like a swarm of bees every once in a while just uh like a horror-ish place and the sky is red um uh, but each area is going to sound a bit different and i feel like the 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 lower tones mixed with the lighter somber back tone of this this track really helps illustrate the winter climate like it it sounds sad and cold like it is. <laughs> so, yeah, you're always getting some music with this one. And it, uh, it's a definitely a different direction. But I, I feel like From Software really took the constructive uh, criticism that fans gave Breath of the Wild and took it upon themselves to be like, hey, okay, we can, we can see if fans like it the way that they say they like it. And so far, yeah, I've liked, I've liked what they've uh, uh, put on offer here a lot. A whole lot. Now, if, uh, since Breath of the Wild is getting a sequel, I'm curious to see what they do 
kind of in a response to uh, Elden Ring because it's supposed to come out maybe sometime, maybe holiday, maybe uh, winter holiday of this year, which means they still have plenty of time for development, especially on the uh, smaller things. Um, smaller meaning, I mean, it's still going to take time to develop, but like adding adding more active, uh, more consistent music throughout the game. And uh, maybe, like, as long as they got that climbing mechanic, that's going to serve them really well. This is one of the best things that uh, any game has done for an open world game, was you can climb anywhere. Fantastic. Because up until that point, you had games like uh, Fallout and Skyrim and uh, Far Cry, where you could sort of kind of climb, but it was you just kind of jumping sideways up a mountain and kind of cheating your way over. <laughs> like almost glitching your way to areas where you shouldn't be and it just didn't really feel that natural so just adding that built-in ability to scale things as your character was super important and i would love it if more open world style games did that uh, the way this one's built uh i i guess it doesn't totally feel super appropriate but i can see I could definitely see a game like Breath of the Wild being able to implement that, but still have solid boundaries. Like you, they already kind of, um, they already kind of instituted that in their first uh, in Breath of the Wild, where when you go into like a guardian or a uh, uh, a shrine, the walls aren't climbable there. Like they're too smooth or they're they're too like alien of a material to where you can't climb those so you can definitely limit your players but still have 99.99 percent of your open world be climbable that kind of thing yeah anyway <laughs> that's that's me nerding out about open world design so here they are nice to see you hey tactics lion i can't believe you've come all this way Let's see, study incantations. I don't know if you got nothing new, that's fine. I've been gripped by a terrifying thought. The rhythms and calculus of the master's finger betray a you too. suspicion of the holism of the golden order. Mm -hmm. A conceit, I am afraid, that cannot be overlooked. Oh, but how could this be? I dread to even entertain the possibility. But somehow, I cannot cast aside my doubts about the master. Tell me, have I simply lost my head? Only, if the Master were true to the Golden Order, why would he think to breach this forbidden mount of fire? Mm. Okay. Oh, Master. Holism. My mind at Holy once quality. dispel these fearsome thoughts. I want to place my trust in you, to be your scribe. Right. Holism. The theory that parts of a whole are an intimate interconnection such that they, that they cannot exist independently of the whole or cannot be understood without reference to the whole, which is thus regarded as greater than the sum of its parts. Holism is often applied to mental states, language, and ecology. Interesting. Huh. Hello. Okay. So we got his his scribe is having doubts about his uh his senpai. Okay. I'm reading the guide off to my site. Hold on, I'm gonna see what uh Tactics Lion posted there for a sec. They could have created Breath of the Wild the way they did. They did. They developed more standard music from their in-house people. They created such a history of that sort of music, plus increasing rigidity for lack uh, of uh, flatness for 2D-ish games that creating an actual open 3D style might have required composing differently for the sake of the creator. Like, I mean, they already had um, 
I know they've had plenty of other 3D games, you know. They've had Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and, uh, like, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, uh, Skyward Sword before that. So, like, they've, they've composed plenty of 3D music. Uh, you know, music for the 3D games, and some of it's been super iconic, especially in uh, Ocarina of Time. Some of the most iconic music in the series came from that that game. But like, but yeah, yeah, I get you, I get you there. Like it being being an open world can make creators go to different. Uh, you know, different mental spaces in their compositions, which is exciting, I think. And uh, it's it's where I understand that criticism of uh, uh, that people give Breath of the Wild when they say it feels like maybe the ambient music was not the full potential of, uh, of an open-world Zelda. And I get that. Uh, Though, like when you get into a battle in the in the open world, the battle music kind of comes comes in, and it's really exciting and heart pounding, and that's very good. But just the walking around music, um, like this is the walking around music for Elden Ring. Just you know, just soft, sad, somber strings, and it changes depending on where you are, and it it's super unintrusive. Like I, it blends in so so well with just me playing that I forget it's there, but it just adds atmosphere and environment to the game. Um, and it's definitely been done before, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, I'm trying to think of other open world games that do it well. Sadly, I haven't played a whole bunch of other open world games aside from like uh, the Elder Scrolls games pretty much Bethesda games Elder Scrolls and uh, Fallout but I yeah I, I honestly can't I don't think that the Elder Scrolls games had a lot of music in their open worlds and they're just walking around you could play radio stations on your uh, little pit boy arm uh, computer in Fallout but those were definitely intrusive because you were, but you knew you were listening to music when you were doing it. And if it's done right, you don't always realize that you're listening to music. It just, it's just part of the world. And I feel like this hits that balance really well. And for the areas where it, uh, is, um, more noticeable, that's an even harder balance because the one I was talking about a second ago, Kaled, here I'll, I'll warp there for a second. Uh, it's the, it fits the atmosphere, but it's so such a, like shake you out of your comfort zone kind kind of song that it's hard not to notice it. Uh, so it works for the area for sure, but it's it's the one area that I can. Oops, I should probably be up here. It's the one area in the game that I uh, specifically can think of, that like I can think of its music, just being a part of the environment. So yeah, this area, this big area of all red sky. Lots of sad walks. Yeah, just that, oh, that, I don't know what instrument that is, but it sounds like a hive of bees that just comes in and out slowly. Oh. It's so chilling. It's like, okay, this place is dangerous. This place is sick and rotting and uncomfortable, and I shouldn't be here. The things, the things that live here probably shouldn't exist. That kind of thing. Like, look at that rock formation that's a skull. Like, most likely it was a giant that died 450 years ago, and then the limestone started uh, replacing the calcium, that kind of thing. Uh, yep, now you get closer. But yeah, like this, this whole area is just uncomfortable. Like that's the, uh, that's the vibe of this area. But uh, yeah, um, specifically this, this, this section of the, uh, the map, Kaled, is the one area that I can really think 
if I if I think about the music, I can hear it. But there are one, two, three, four, five. Then we go underground. Six, seven, eight, some. You know, eight to twelve areas in the game, and uh, they all have their different, you know, standalone walking around score. And uh, most of them I, c I couldn't really, you know, pick up on. They're just there. They exist and they add to the atmosphere. They add to the feeling of the world in a really just pleasing way to, the, to my brain. To <laughs> the way I experience the game. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Kaled specifically, this, the Red Sky area, the, uh, is just chilling and makes it, it feels like watching a horror movie the music does it's like oh no something's something's around every corner something's gonna happen i'm in trouble here i'm really like i sh the scared feeling i have here is justified yeah so yeah that's my that's my thought on uh music and video games specifically tied to this game at the moment all right next place let's see After defeating the fire giant, we want to go... Oh, okay. Bottom of the Colosseum Cliffs. Okay, it looks like we're going back to this spot where they were a second ago. Yeah! Heck yeah. Yeah, okay. We get to certain places like Hyrule Castle, which has dominant music. And after so much peace and silence, which gives a different atmosphere, I'm interested in ambient. Breath of the Wild has comparatively uh, sprightly music. That's how it's developed. Sad, sad walk, Red Sky. Yeah, like I, I, I'm excited to see what they do with the sequel with to, with uh, Breath of the Wild too, because. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be a criticism. They really take to heart uh, the music one. <laughs> no, you're all good. I'm, I'm happy to to discuss things with folks in the chat. This is always fun. The, the, my only problem is I'm not always good at playing a game and discussing. But here we go. I'll try to play and talk at the same time. Uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see what direction they take. But I, I'd say that they, at the very least, have a fantastically strong template with this game if like th this is my just honest impression playing this game is that Elden Ring took the criticism that was lobbed at Breath of the Wild and applied it to itself uh, it's like okay this is what people are wanting in an open world game and so I'm hoping that they take some of the examples of this game but still continue to innovate in their own way but don't overdo it like nintendo has the like i'm not saying don't don't reinvent the wheel because nintendo can be very good at reinventing the wheel uh the the issue nintendo has historically run into is they um they see the I don't know. It, it feels like they they often require innovation when it isn't needed, and that can that can in the long run run bite them in the butt. Like here's a current example: uh, they just recently shut down, or they're just about to shut down their um, like DS their 3DS and DS shop, right? Or maybe it's just, whatever, it's probably the same shop. The online shop. Which means that there's going to be a whole host of games that are unplayable now. Because they required the DS hardware to, to play them. And most systems don't have that problem. If you look at the under other, yeah, if you look at the other end of the spectrum, the current series of Xbox, the Xbox, um... Series S and X, they're back. They're backwards compatible all the way to the first Xbox. You can play your first Xbox games, and 
all the games leading up to the current system on the new Xbox hardware. You can't do that with a Wii game on Nintendo or a DS game on current Nintendo. And that's a real shame. And Nintendo is about the crabbiest big developer when it comes to uh, backwards compatibility. And no one understands why they're like that. And it's really unfortunate because they're, they're pretty much the Disney of video gaming. And they have a really unfortunate selfish quality about them and when it comes to uh, uh, re-releasing or making it easier for people to play ga old games in their library uh, like try to try to play Mother 3 in America you have to emulate it because they've never released it here and try try to try to find try to be able to download like a a DS game this year uh next year because that shop's going to be gone uh yeah right they're they're really bad at yeah backing up their pre preserving their history essentially and they're also the worst when it comes to uh trying to sue people over uh like emulation and that kind of thing which thankfully in uh, several cases, they've lost those lawsuits because the uh, emulation community tends to be able to argue well in the favor of um, uh, of preservation, pr preserving games, because Nintendo doesn't do it, and it hurts their their player base. Their player base. It hurts the history of their their uh, their their games. They do not preserve well. They just expect people to buy their new stuff, and yeah, it's it's a big problem, and yeah, and you compare that again to like Microsoft and Xbox, and yeah, you can play Halo 1 on, you can take your Halo 1 disc, I think, and put it into a current uh, Xbox system and play that game. It's all good. You got, you got your old games, but uh, because Nintendo really likes to push their gimmicks and that's and that historically that's end up that ends up being what they appear to be like motion controls and and 3d and all that stuff they don't last a lot of them don't last the one I, I feel like the one the biggest innovation that they have made for the overall video gaming is the gyroscope controls being able to like like assist your aim with arrows or guns just by moving the controller a little bit that's something that like the rest of the systems are starting to adopt that's probably the best innovation they've they've made uh, but that took them about three systems to get there yeah but yeah <laughs> gosh I'm just talking my head off about video games I <laughs> It's a, it's a thing I clear, clearly I'm passionate about. Hold on. I thought they were supposed to be here, but apparently not. Let's see. On the bottom of the Colosseum Plus, facing the west side of the Air Tree Sanctuary. West side. Uh, it's past several plants. Okay, I think I know where he is. Hey, Bestie, how are you doing? Awesome. A whole bunch of people are here. I think I'm supposed to be on the... This is the right area, but it's way down there. So I think I need to... Yeah, 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 I need to teleport myself right here and go down the branches of that tree. Well, good morning. Yeah, yeah, thanks to Sony. Thanks to the uh, backwards compatibility from PS2 to PS1. Yeah. They're, they're responsible for that. Good call. Uh, actually, actually, that's I think that's incorrect. Um, I think the first system to do back backwards compatibility was um, it might have been the Atari twenty six hundred, but you had to have a um, you had to have like a uh, little what do you call it uh, cartridge dock thing. So it was like an add-on, but you could play the games from the previous system. Yeah, yeah, I only learned that like a month or two ago. Yeah, like a, 
uh, little adapter. Pretty much like the, you know, how there was the uh, Super Game Boy adapter uh, for SNES where you could play Game Boy games in your Super Nintendo? Just like that. Uh, exactly, right. I'm pretty sure it was one of the Atari systems, but it was before PS1. But I only just learned that recently. I would have said the same thing uh, two months ago if uh, if I hadn't watched some video on backwards compatibility. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go down this big old tree branch. The SGB adapter. <laughs> cool. Super Game Boy adapter. Heck yes. That was that was just so good because I I'm pretty sure. No, I was gonna say I played Kirby Superstar with a friend with that, but now he uh, that was an SNES game. But uh, I think it might have been the same day that he showed me my buddy TJ back in uh, back in my middle school days. I haven't spoken to him in years. Uh, but yeah, I remember hanging out with him one day and like he showed me his Game Boy adapter for his Super Super Game Boy adapter. I said, what? This blows my mind. And uh, I think it was that same day we played through uh, the Great Cave Offensive. Fantastic game. Oh no! No! Paint on the bed! <laughs> who know who knows the cure for paint on sheets? Paint on cotton, I don't know. Google will help you there. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, our guys are somewhere in this area. Hey, is that you? No, that's not you. Are they? Unless I'm reading this guide wrong, which I could very well be. All right, I thought it was right here. Let's take a look. Oh, I see. Okay. How do I get in there? To, then, there's an area I need to go to. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, I know what I want to do then. This is going to have to wait. But it's it's another kind of fork in the road I need to go to in a bit. But for now, let's go finish Ronnie's quest. Okay. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. Ah, and I still I also have Millicent's quest to finish. But we are working on Ronnie's. Okay. Ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We want to do this. Yeah, there are let me count them real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five. Yeah, there there are six endings to this game, and just the way that they have um, uh, set them up, you can have access to one or all six by the end of your playing, depending on how much uh, you invest in different, you know, characters and storylines, right? Uh, but the, the the fact that you're able to essentially choose which one at the end. Like, you beat the game, and you're like, all right, here's all my options I can do. That's pretty cool. Uh, but you have to have earned all those by doing very hard things in each of these directions, which I'm trying to do, yeah. Not Like, it's not doing the uh, Mass Effect 3 ending, where I guess there was some effort in that one uh, that you had to put ahead to be able to get those options. But yeah, you have to earn the options. Otherwise, you're just going to get that one standard ending. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm earning those options. And so right now I am going to go to looking up my next step right here. Yep, we did that. We did that. Player can travel back to the Lake of Rot, the Angel River. 
continue to the Grand Cloister. Okay. Access to the... Okay, we already... Okay, I know where to go. Cool. We already defeated the boss we needed to, and... We get to go down here. Yeah, bleach. Maybe bleach is the way. Oh, how much paint was it? Was it a drop or was it a glob? Yep, this used to be, there used to be a um, uh, ethereal like wall blocking my way here, and now that we got a uh, here, I'll show you in my inventory. We got this ring. Now we can go past. It. So what's the ring description? It's a ring depicting a leaden full full moon. Symbolic of a cold oath, the ring is supposed to be given to, by Lunar Princess Ronnie to her consort, which is now us. Ronnie is an Empyrean, meaning her consort would by rights earn the title of Lord. A warning is engraved within. Whoever thou, may, whoever thou mayest be, take not the ring from this place. The solitude beyond the night is better mine alone. Okay. Well, I guess we did take the ring. <laughs> it was in the treasure chest at uh, uh, Renala's at the Full Moon Queen's library. Seek dark. Praise the love. Well done. Alright. Thanks, other folks. Uh, which one, uh, which one is MA3? By the way, please play Majora's Mask at some point. It is one of my favorite Zelda games. It is superb. And I know it takes... I know it takes a... Like... Adjustment in your... Like, play style to get used to it. Because it's got that day... Daytime... That three-day mechanic. And yeah, I, it's... It's a scheduling kind of game. Which was a super... Unique decision. And... I know, I know. Right? Oh, you like the things to make that happen. Fair, fair enough. Well, there's, I mean, there's <coughs> emulation. <coughs> there's, a, there, there, there are ways to play it. Uh, I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? Huh? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying that. I mean, there's also like watching people on, there's watching people on YouTube, which I have played that. Dude, I played a wonderful. Oh my God, such a wonderful. Uh, version of it uh last year uh the artist he, he's a youtuber as well he goes by Neril n-e-r-r-e-l and it, i i love his videos he does one on majora's mask uh and and it was like the 64 version versus the uh remake on uh 3ds one of the he, he's got this uh uh, what do you call it? A, uh, it's the, it very dry, kind of deadpan sense of humor. And, like, he, he's really funny with having this kind of monotone way of speaking. Uh, and that, that's kind of the direction he has with his videos. Uh, but he does this, yeah, his, this discussion on what makes the original better in, in most ways versus the uh, remake. And, and it's really compelling and it's really good. Uh, you know, the remake does do some things right, but the original does have some things that make it maybe the more definitive version. And, um, so not only does he have this YouTube channel, also he, uh, he's an artist in his own right, and he, his focus, the, like, f I want to say like three to five years of his life on this art restoration project for Majora's Mask. Which essentially means he'll he takes these sections, he he takes uh, say, how do I put it? Like, say there's like a little uh, square in uh, Majora's Mask, like several pixels high and wide, and it's like a lamp or something uh, on the side of a wall. He will take that and kind of interpret what what they intended with that and just like hand draw it out himself that kind of thing and um 
then he will import those uh, paintings, those drawings into the into the game files. And the effect of that is when you go, when you upload those, when you uh, patch the game with that, when you mod it, it still feels, it still looks and feels like Majora's Mask. It feels like how you remember it. But if you look carefully, it's super detailed. Like that's the intent with art restoration, is you're, you're making it still feel like the original artwork, but it is new. Like if you watch, if you watch someone doing traditional art restoration, like there's a there's an old painting they got waterlogged or something, and the like there's this lady's the, the painting of is of this lady, but her foot was in water for ten days or something because of maybe some flood. You send that painting to a to an uh, art restoration uh, professional, and they will meticulously study the like the style of paint and what what makes that paint like what age does uh, does to that kind of paint and uh, get that color down and that style down so specifically it's it's oh my god it's such a specific process to just to make it feel like the rest of the painting so yeah right uh, so this dude this youtuber narrow uh, had been I I think he's completely finished at this point. He, I think he just recently finished in the last year or two. Um, and I played his most current build uh, last year of Majora's Mask, and it was seamless. Like, I went in feeling like, okay, I'm ready to play the game I remember from Nintendo 64. And I went in, and that that's what it felt like. But if I took a second to just look at, like, the... Uh, the painted on trees in the background because you know how like in uh ocarina of time the boundaries of like hyrule field were like rocks and trees but it was flat it was like a, a flat wall that kind of thing but they detailed it to make it look like rocks and trees if you looked at the trees in this uh art restoration project you could count the leaves on them if you're just if you're just running past them and passing and you just kind of catch them with your eye off to the side, it's like yeah, this is just regular old Majora's Mask. I don't even notice. But if you take just a second to look at them, it's super detailed. And like man, like the dude has dude has such a good eye for that kind of thing. Uh. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he got the inspiration, I believe, from uh, the restoration project for. Resident Evil 4, which I think went on for about seven or eight years before they finally finished, I think last year, actually. Uh, so that's done now as well. If you ever want to play a modded version of Resident Evil 4, there is a crazy fantastic uh, art restoration edition of that, that it feels like the game you played, but if you just take the time to look at the details, they are there. Like, the the team of artists that worked on that uh, had to, you know, research uh, different, uh, like, architecture that these, like, door frames and whatnot were based on. Like, they would have to find, uh, it's like, okay, this, they, they would have to look through, like, libraries of, okay, this is definitely Roman. They had, they had essentially had to get, like, in their own time, like, these college-level degrees in architecture to understand where where this design is coming from and oh, oh my god it's it's so it's it's so fascinating yeah anyway <laughs> that's what that is all right where am i <laughs> oh good that's good to hear clover oh it's finally coming up yeah you might need some bleach right all right, so let's see. We need to be right, right. Oh, so oh yeah, like the um, uh, the Zonai tribe, right, right. Like that's gonna be probably something they're gonna explore next in the uh, Breath of the Wild too, because they were a mis mysterious influence on the world of uh, Breath of the Wild, but they didn't go into a whole lot of detail. But they seem to be. Uh, 
like so much of the architecture in that game was based on this one tribe that didn't have a lot of exploration, but I feel like was intentionally kept mysterious. But they def they seem to have some influence on the um... right, right. It, it, uh, like the trailer of Breath of the Wild 2, that, that magic hand stuff seems to be uh, influenced by that tribe. All right, here we go. Right, okay, so here we are. We can Moonlight Altar, I have not been here before. We are in this new underground area. Bravery. It's like a dream. I did it. Ah, stars. In short, praise the sorcerer. Oh, and moon! So pretty! Oh, love it. Horsey, come on. I put my lantern on as well, so I got this orange glow. Awesome. So now there's this wonderful underground... Is this even underground? Like, it's... Is this underground? I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure if it is. But it's nighttime. No, it can't be because the moon's out. Ow. Go away. Leave me alone. I don't want to fight y'all. I just want to enjoy myself. Oh. That was a magic trap. I need to turn my lantern off. Ah! Stop it. Try to quit trying to hit me with magic. I love that parts of the world are breakable, like some uh, some pillars and trees and whatnot that uh, enemies can knock down. It definitely makes the world feel more alive. My elk horse, uh, right? His name is Torrent. Oh, look at him. Yeah. That's our buddy. He can double jump. Oh, <laughs> my quilt cover's turning orange. Oh, no. Oh well, it'll be a fun memory. Even if it's hard right now, I'm sorry. Alright. Alright, you invisible dude. You gotta go. You're gonna shoot me with magic if I don't kill you. Let there be underground tomb. First off, attacking. Didn't expect underground. Yeah, well, where is it? Usually, ruins like this tend to actually, yeah, have an underground. A uh, staircase leading to a small underground room with either treasure or a, or a boss or someone who will sell you some things. Kind of, <laughs> kind of like the original Zelda. Like I feel like it definitely took some. There, there are so many homages to that very first. For the time, for its time, that first Zelda was an open world game. That's what it is. That's <laughs> it is. You start that first game. And, uh, though, I guess with that one, yeah, yeah, it is, it's technically an open world game. You have to f find some key items to get past some things. Oh my god. I don't want to fight you. I'm not ready. I could, but, oh good, there we go, that's what I wanted. A save point. If I die, I'll come back here. Ooh, a lot of these. Wow. You're not coming in this church. Glintstone Dragon Adula. A drag queen! Yeah, heck yeah. A queen of dragons. Drag queen. Drag king and drag queen. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I choose to fight the drag queen. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna outdo her on that stage. I'll show you. I can wear that dress better than that queen. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, so there's a uh, secret hole in the ground here. We'll have to come back in a second because I'm gonna fight that drag queen. I'm gonna. <laughs> this is the drag queen dry clean. Maybe she do. I don't know, can you dry queen? I guess it depends on how many sequins and, like, little... and glitter and stuff is on the dress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright. 
So these things have been pretty rare throughout the game, but we're, I guess we're in the place where they fall from the sky or something. And it looks like we got another, huh. Okay, there's got to be a map somewhere at some point down here that will illuminate this area for us. That's very interesting. There's a minor air tree off to the... Oh! Oh, I think I see. So this entire um, plateau up here has been, like, inaccessible to us for, like, all of the game up until this point. I've been wondering occasionally, how do we get up there? How do we get up to this place? Never been able to get up here. There's an entire village... Like this little spot, this is actually under this plateau. It, uh, say, like, here's the plateau and here's the land. Like, there's a big carve out. Like, it, it's kind of balanced. So, like, there's this empty area under here. Uh, so, yeah, like, th this whole area under here is where that village is. But, yeah, apparently the rest of this plateau we haven't been able to get up to. So, that's neat. <laughs> Reverse Breath of the Wild. Oh, oh, you're welcome. This is awesome. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy you're hanging out. I'm having, a, I'm having the best time. All right, let's try to take out the dragon. It's gonna be drag gone gone in a second. All right, let's get our buddy out. Oh, hi there. Oh boy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. I'm gonna Kamehameha wave her. Wah! Oh no, she's far away! Go, get closer. Come on. Ugh. Ah, that wasn't as much as I wanted. Fine. Ah! Ugh. Okay, he's just gonna land up there. Oh, I missed my big chance and was too far away. Oh, that's awesome. Look at her freezing the ground with that blue light. Fine, I'm gonna get her with a sword. She's got crystals all over. Dang it, I keep rolling right into it. At least it's not killing me automatically. If it just, like, stayed there and continued to hurt, I would be in trouble. Alright. I'm likely gonna have to fight her again based on how much... how well I'm doing. We'll see, though. I might beat her. I might beat her. Ah. <laughs> Bring it. Oh my god! <laughs> That's the first I've seen of that move. A dragon making a magic crystal sword and then swinging it at me. That's cool. <laughs> ah, she keeps flying away right before I can do this. It's quick. Especially for a dragon. When they dive at you, they're really quick. But uh, just flying around not too bad to, to, to handle. I'm gonna get rid of this item real quick. I don't need that. There we go. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. Oh, she still hit me. Oh good, that's my friend. That's my clone. Don't mess with me. Don't do it. Yes! Oh, that was a good hit. Got her like four times. I, who knows? I could do it. Come on, Torrent. Jump off and slash. Ah, I missed. Yes! It worked. Oh! Oh, you... 
teleported. That's fine. She didn't uh, regain her health or anything. I do appreciate that a lot. Uh, when a baddie teleports away back to their starting position, they don't uh, they don't regain all their health back. I think that was a thing in the original. If you got too far away from a certain bad guy. Oh! oh. <laughs> doing it. We're doing it. We could do this. Ah! Yes! Rolled out of the way. Ah. I'm coming. Got her! Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Dragon Heart. A jeweler's moonblade. Cool. <laughs> it was a close one. We only had one more health potion left, and we were just above half health. So maybe three more hits, and we we would have been done. <laughs> we are just three thousand away from a level, which we can just get with some one of these. Almost. One more. Essentially uh, usable, like experience, like an item. Good stuff. Alright, where do we want to put this? How about extra health? That'd be nice. There it goes. So we just got a new spell from her. Let's take a look. There it is. Uh, no, that's not. Here it is. A Jula's Moonblade. Sweeping slash followed by a cold blade projectile. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Let's check that out. Oh, cool. It makes this crescent of, uh, that shoots out from the sword. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Dragonheart with uh, Sean Connery as the dragon. I remember that. I never saw the sequel, but uh, yeah, I saw the original one uh, with Bowen. I, I forget who played Bowen, but I loved, I loved that dude. Heck yeah. I can stay, I can stay awake three days without sleep. I could go three weeks. Good stuff. All right, so let's try to go down this, the mystery hole. So there's this pit right here. We need to try to safe enough to go down now because we have used all the experience we had. Just got to be careful descending because that could kill me. Seek down. Here. Yes. Yes, a toast. Slancha. To dragons and drag queens and other draggy things. I can't think of a third one, but yeah. Milo. I, I'm curious what Milo is. First off, horseback battle. <laughs> yeah, I, I want some. I want some chalky milk. Oh, hello. What are you? Who are you? Oh, it's it's Ronnie. I didn't know she had four arms. Oh yeah, no, I do. she did have four arms. This looks like two fingers, but corrupted or something? Like slain? Really interesting. Yeah, there's the ring we got from uh, 
hundred dollars. Wake up, Ronnie. Oh, there she goes. She fades away. <sighs> what does it mean? Ah, oh, there she is. Her spirit still remains. I love that double face thing she has going on. She's got this, like, ethereal second face right next to her. I'm trying to get a good shot of it, but you can kind of see it. This ghostly, spiritual second face just mirrored right next to hers it's oh it's so cool ah and by the way these little uh, phantoms right here that's other players in their own worlds uh they just they pop in every once in a while but uh that's other people playing so if you see the little white phantoms that's just other players it's not anything to do with the rest of the story so it was thee who would become my lord perhaps i needn't have warned thee I am pleased, however. Thou art a fitting choice. I go now to the night sky. It is there I shall find mine order. I bid thee travel the path of the Lord. four arms. And once all is done, we shall see each other once more. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so she's leading me on the path to one of the four one of the six endings. Cool. I know what sword that is. I'm pretty sure this is uh, one of these swords that's a uh, staple of the series. I think it's yeah, it's called like the Moonlight Great Sword. It's it's called something different usually in each game, but this has the exact design of the yeah the Moonlight Great Sword in each of the games. Yep, the the, the name of the skill is called Moonlight Great Sword. Fantastic. All right. All right, a moon greatsword bestowed by a carrion queen upon her spouse to honor long-standing tradition, one of the legendary armaments. Ronnie's sigil is a full moon, cold and leaden, and this sword is but a beam of its light. Unique skill, moonlight greatsword. Classic. Even in Bloodborne they had it when they uh, came out with the DLC. Though I think the very first game they produced. I think it was called King's Glaive or King's Grave. It it even had this uh this sword. So it's it's one of the few elements of the their history as a gaming company that they keep putting in their games is a little nod and a wink. Oh good. Good, good, good. The bleach helped. I'm very, very happy that it was white sheets. If if it was like dark blue sheets, oh what a tragedy. You would have made some orange spots. All right. So raise the sword aloft, bathing it in the light of the dark moon, temporarily increasing the magic attack power it imbues and imbues the blade with frost. Charged attacks release blasts of moonlight. Cool, and actually, I can actually use it. It's not going to be too, uh, too cumbersome for me. There we go. Let's see what this looks like when I use it. So if I use the... I just regular swing it it looks like that but if I two-hand it and use the uh, special move okay I think it might be a special move yeah there we go yeah <laughs> oh cool awesome very cool okay so next what do we need to do This will give the option of playing either. Okay, cool. So now, now we have the option of getting a oh, water, water to toast. So now we have the uh, one of the six options at the end of the game uh, to get one of the endings, and this one is one of the more unique ones actually. So that'll be cool. I might end, I might end up choosing this one because it's so unique. Uh, we'll see. Still on the path to uh, figuring out all the endings, but I do want to explore this area some more. Yeah. Cool. 
What a fun sword. I'm gonna be right back. I gotta use the restroom, but yeah, be back shortly. Yes, Elden chair. The chair didn't ring. Well, good. I'm glad it's a good day. You know, even with all those things. What's a, what's a dime, what's a diamyo? Daimyo? Not sure what daimyo is. Please, please explain. Yeah, oh, I bet. Goodness. I feel like I've heard the word, but I I don't. It just must have been in passing. It was a Japanese medieval Japanese government system, the daimyo. Like, was it? I guess this was. Was this before or after feudal? The feudal system, or is it included in what's uh, considered a feudal system of government? Okay, so it was, still was shogunate, so it was still feudal. Okay. Interesting. Cool. All right. this is lots of crystal structures very much like the uh, like uh, the both the Academy and Ronnie's castle what was the name of it uh, it was called yeah uh, Karia this is where Ronnie who we just talked to yep here was her tower uh, what she called her home lots of crystal structures like this around there There's, is that another dragon God dang it. <laughs> We're gonna have to fight another one of you guys. Fine. Fine. Bring it on. Uh. Yeah, okay. Got two crystal swords on me. Uh, this time, it doesn't look like I got a, uh... Well, you're a, you're a tiny dragon. I don't have to fight y'all. Never mind. He's not a big dragon. 
All right. Yeah, there is a difference. These uh, these minor dragons aren't uh, aren't bosses. They're just uh, hard enemies. I could fight them if I wanted to, but I don't want to have to kill them. If they're a boss, yeah, I'll go after them. But if they're not, then they're not gonna drop anything unique. It's so best to just leave them alone. Just having a good old draggy time. This is cool though, so like... Uh, oh, no one's written a message here. Hold on, you got... I gotta follow in the footsteps of, uh, of greatness. I don't know, where is it? Things? Maybe thing? Enemies? Nope, there we go. Uh, be wary of dog, try dog like first off. Where are ya? Oh. Alright, I'll just put dog. Dog! Every time you see a turtle walking around, you gotta put dog. Yeah, you're a dog. So now, when people come by here to this turtle, they can see... DOG! Pretty much every other place I've seen one of these. Oh! Hold on. There's another one, so... It, it, it can't be helped. I'll put DOG ahead. There's my dog. There you are. Dog ahead. You know, for the good of the world. You gotta you gotta have these mess messages. Death pinata. So many dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, a death pinata that <laughs> that brings so many awful images to mind. Like inside is like it's just packed with nitroglycerin or like anthrax or something. So it either explodes or it just like explodes into a powder of poison. <laughs> oh, that's such a dark thought. <laughs> pinata. Pinata. <sighs> I, maybe I'm the first. You know what? Be wary of dog. dog. Yeah, I'll put you there. Be wary of dog. Yeah, you're a good dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cutesy little paper mache llama explodes into poison gas and acid oh my god Look at the poor children no all right all right we got an ever jail here which means an optional little mini boss should be fun uh, so it's just you and me huh Betty out of the way. Oh. Ah. Darn it. Eh, they're a dodgy sort. Ooh. What was that? <laughs> I 
<laughs> ah, why would you do this? <laughs> I thought you loved me. <laughs> Dad, my teeth are melting. <sighs> All right, let's change up tactics real quick. We don't need faith, uh, since we're not using that spell anymore. We can change our helmet to let us use this moon spell. Let's try this. This might help us out. <laughs> hmm. We'll see. Get him! Go get him! Oh, you missed! Oh no. Stop it! Ow. Get him! Ah, uh, doesn't do much. Fine. It's gonna have to be mostly, uh, physical fight then no don't do it I know what I want you ain't gonna get me no oh you got me never mind <laughs> I'll come back. I'll come back to this place later when I'm... Maybe I respect my character to uh, be more, like, defensive and strength-based rather than magic, because I'm not going to take it out with this uh, magic build I got right now. It's going to take too long. Like, maybe eventually, but... I'm going to put a mark right here. Bam. Bam. Little enemy sign to come back at another time. For now, I just want to explore. And thankfully, we used all that experience a second ago to get another level, so we only had just a little bit to lose. No big deal. No big deal at all. What are you doing up there? <laughs> cool. You'll never get me. <laughs> oh, you got me. Oh. oh, hello. Woof. Hello, woof, woof. Playing this game? All right. Fine. Dark Souls, the From Software games are one of the few series of games where they have me clawing, using the claw grip on my right hand. I end up, like, using my middle finger to touch the uh, top button, the triangle button, while I'm pressing the left button with my index finger and controlling with my thumb. It's it's such an awkward play style, but it's, yeah, claw grip. Right? Right. <laughs> it's so weird. They're the one, one of the few that I do it with. And this one has made it even more complex than the other ones. Like, I... Oh. I hope they add more customization, but the, um, the force, they, they start you off having the crouch button be L3, the pushing your, uh, left toggle down. Oh my god, it was the worst decision. You accidentally crouch all the time, if you're like me. All right, we're gonna get you. Missed. Yee-hee! One more. Ugh. Oh boy. Get up, get up, get up. Drink. Wah. Oh boy. Wah. All right. Why is it always dog?
right, right, you pre trained to accidentally crouch all the time. Right, ugh. Oh. I would love to take crouch off the menu for, for most of the game, honestly. Or, like, what I'd love to be able to do is customize it so I can actually use the, uh, uh, select a button for anything other than taking pictures, because I never do that. Uh, it's, a, it's such a use case button, but it's there. I'd love to be able to just tap it for the crouch button and have L3 be just, in, just a secondary run. That'd be nice, and I'm cool with it being a copy of the run button, but uh, yeah, I, I want crouch to not be... And you you can customize, but all the other configurations I've come up with don't uh, don't work that well either. But uh, yeah, sadly, select is not one you can customize. Ugh. That's one I would love to just put crouch there because it's an easy reach and easy to rem remember the crouch, and it's so rarely used. Like you sneak around, you can be sneaky, but for most use cases, it's. It, Especially once you start getting stronger, I have rarely found a need to crouch. And so for the times when it can be fun, select would be a better option. A button that's out of the way that it won't accidentally press. I'd rather accidentally hit this and it'd be a run button, you know? What do your signs say? Precious item, yes. Could this be something incredible? Strong foe, therefore be wary of recklessness. Recklessness. Cool, we got three of these seven stones. That's cool. Praise the material. Rockin'. Well, we got those. Oh, cool. There's a tower over there, too. Good, good, good. Usually they hold pretty cool items. Let's go check that out. Be wary of wolf. Well, we just fought the wolf. We're good. I don't want to fight another Zarzar. Our dog. Our dog's name is Zarzar. She's a husky. Oh, let's see if any of these say dog. I bet they do. Ah, dragon. Ah, behold, rat. That could be a dog. Could this be a dog? <laughs> yep. Tried and true jokes. <laughs> Always call him the turtle's dog. A doggo? There's another one. Look at that dog. Look at that dog right there. He's a slow dog. A Zarzar doggo. Uh-huh. She's the goodest dog. She's my baby girl. Ah, that's right, I have a jail. Oh no, are you gonna make me have to beat the ever jail to get in here? Oh no, I don't wanna do that, turtle dog. If that's gonna be the rec uh, requirement to get in here, then it's a steep price. Seek three great wild, wise beasts. Oh, okay. Seek north, seek or seek east, okay. Well, let's go east first, then. They're going to be blue-tinted, the animals we have to find. That's right off the side of this. What you... So, northeast, I assume. North and east. Would be one of them. Uh... Not one of you guys. Northwest. Up, oh, that might be one. Are you? No, nope, those are snails. They would have kind of a glowy blue about them. If we see it, I'll let you know. Nope. More snails. Got to catch them all. M is a shortened form form of them. No. Oh, I thought you were asking. I thought you were asking what the contraction was. It's fair enough. Like you're not you're not a native English speaker. I thought you M. <laughs> yeah, the blue
blue things. The Pokemon. Yeah, the special. The shinies. The shiny Pokemon that I'm hunting. So somewhere in this direction, I suppose. They said northeast. It could be on the very northeast of this plateau. We don't know. But we'll just keep going in this direction. Maybe we'll find it. We'll at least find one of them. kind of looking around in all directions as I travel in this direction. I mean, I could look up a guide for this part, but, I mean, you know, I'm only with those specific guides, sure, but with these parts that are big exploration areas, I, I, I like exploring. I, I hadn't looked at a guide until just today, after a week and a half of playing this, so... I still very much appreciate the the journey <laughs> I can words <laughs> that's awesome I can words I speak good I'm sorry goodly staircase of dogs. <gasps> There's a wise beast right there. Usually they're not that gigantic. Usually they're just the size of a normal animal. Behold! La laggardly. What is laggardly? Hold on. Hold on. Time to look up a word. Just a moment. Hold on. I got a message. Laggardly. Time to look up this word. A person who makes slow progress and falls behind the others. Ah, like a turtle. The slow boys. You know what? Slow and steady wins the race. But don't ignore the faster pace. Why is it always bad luck? Oh. Bye bye. <laughs> Spirit turtle, it's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Luggedly sword. I love that they put that at uh, adjective in the uh, in the choices you can make for the messages. Why is it always bad luck? I don't know what that means. What's bad luck? Ah! That wasn't even that far. What? Whatever. Oh, wow. Dead. So that was at least one dead turtle puffer. <laughs> yep. Well, it was a spirit turtle. I'm, it wasn't really alive. It was more like a puppet. Puppet pupper. Pupper puppet. Puppeter. Pupperiter. Puppeter purr. All right. I recently learned the term for what I was just doing. Hold on. When you repeat words over and over, it's called uh, echolalia. 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 <laughs> it's like a fun, it's like a compulsive thing. It plays, it plays well with my OCD. You know that scene in the movie Elf, you know, with, with Will Ferrell? where he meets the dude in his dad's office and uh the dude's name is uh Francesco I think and so he meets the dude he's like ooh Francesco and he's just sitting in his dad's office reading the little children's book and he's just passively saying Francesco 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 and his dad's like buddy keep it down <laughs> yeah I related so hard when <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Echolalia. Alright, no horse ahead. As in, don't jump off of this because you'll die. Cool. 
Thanks for the warning, friend. So we need to find three of those. Uh, be wary of key. In short, try cliff. So it might be that there's another one. All right, so that phantom is pointing that way. It could be that there's another of those phantom animals off the cliff. I don't know about that dude. I think he might be lying to me. Here. Oh, come on. Ah, down. Y'all be lying. Y'all be y'all be trying to trick me. You see all these red marks? That's where that's where other players have died, so I'm pretty sure they're tricking me. Behold, down. <sighs> Dang it. You're gonna you're playing into my gullibility here, guys. Cause now I wanna jump down there and test it. Fine. You know what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. <sighs> but just for the fun of it, I'm going to try to land on this. Nope. As soon as that screen like shifts like that, that means you're you're out of bounds. You're going to die. <laughs> yep. This These games are so full of trolling like that. Like hidden passage in front of a wall. So you try to hit the wall and make it disappear. Which is a thing, by the way. Certain walls will disappear if you try to hit them or roll into them or whatever. There are nine times out of the ten, it's it's another player messing with you. <laughs> Thankfully, five to seven times out of ten, there's another message right next to it saying there's liar ahead. Saying that that's a lie. But you then have to think, well, what if that person's being a liar? What if they're lying about the person telling the truth? So I test all of them. I, of course, test every single one that someone tries to mess with me. Which results in nine times out of ten, I me hitting just a solid wall. But you know what? That 10% is a worthwhile item. <laughs> and that's worth it enough, I guess. At some point, at some point it wouldn't be worth it, but you know what, 10% is pretty good. And I, because of that, I got an item like this, which I've never used, but hold on, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, where are you? Oh, it's a talisman, not a, uh, not a helmet. It looks like a helmet to me, because there are three other bug helmets. Raises item discovery. Very nice. If I'm, if I'm wanting to defeat certain enemies and tr hope hope to get maybe one of their pieces of armor that would be super helpful so thanks to that one in ten shot of other characters telling me yeah go this way or try to hit this wall I found that <laughs> I know I, know, I sound like I'm just uh, trying to justify my gullibility but you know what gullible is only a world because there are awful people <laughs> Usually, we, you know what, normally we would just call it trusting, or, like, decent. <laughs> Gullible only exists because people are mean to, be, <laughs> to people like me. <laughs> uh, whatever. funny I mean it makes I'm sure it makes hundreds and hundreds or more maybe thousands of thousands of videos just like me of people playing this game and seeing that message hidden wall ahead and going oh, I'm gonna try it I'm gonna I'm gonna regret it <laughs> but I'm sure it's not gonna be real <laughs> But you know what, that one time out of ten, it's like a release of dopamine in my brain. Oh, yes, it was real. That wall was invisible and there was a treasure behind it that was so cool. <laughs> this this justifies the, the hundred times before that I trusted all these, these dishonest people who were just messing with me. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for the uh, compilation videos of uh people who have gone on to twitch 
and uh, just downloaded several videos, including ones like myself, and just put compilations of people hitting at the wall and just breaking it. Tink, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, dang it, oh, come on, ah, oh, like every, <laughs> and, it, it, and it's just going to be that one message, right? The one player putting a message in front of that one wall and just recording, <laughs> just going, they, they took the time to go to a hundred different Twitch streamers who have played through the game and recorded every last one of them, took their, took that video, and we're like, Look at this message I put early game, and look how many people fell for this. And of course I was one of them, because, oh, it's so hard to resist. <laughs> it's probably not. But what if it is? <laughs> it's, it's that. Uh. <laughs> and I know I, I could have followed, like, an early walkthrough or something. Though, granted, I, like, walkthroughs are still coming out, and there are probably plenty of secrets that are left untouched. But there's enough information out there that if I wanted to, I could have avoided every single one of them. And I could have turned the messages off. I could have not gone up to any of those walls. That never occurred to me. But you know what would have also happened? I probably would have missed getting that really cool item... Or any of, the, any of the other ten or so items that were behind a secret wall. <laughs> That's how I justify it. Being fooled so many times. <sighs> ah, all I'm losing is a little bit of time, I guess. <laughs> and my pride. <laughs> uh, I guess it... If nothing else, you would have been <laughs> right... I would have missed all this fun. This story might not have existed. You know what? May not have gained as much humility in the end. And you know what? We got to all use a little bit of that. <laughs> the Oh, interesting. Huh. The Cathedral of Menace Celis. Menace is a name we all who have played the other Dark Souls games are a little bit familiar with. At least the first Dark Souls. It's not really carried through in uh, 2 and 3. It's a trilogy of games. But uh, yeah, Ma Manus, the uh, the first human. Interesting. Hmm. Just a little uh, tongue-in-cheek kind of mention there, I assume. Because, yeah, I don't think he has really anything to do with the story here. But, yeah, it's there. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, all right. We're st still looking for other dogs. It might be turtles. It might be... Uh, you know what? It, uh, in the last... Um, in the last tower that used this kind of puzzle, they weren't giant blue turtles. They were smaller ones. But they were in odd locations. Uh, there was one that was on a tree like you had to look up and it was a turtle like going up the side of a tree <laughs> like what of course I would have never looked up there but because of that I you know a lot of people would miss that but thankfully someone put a message there so like look up <gasps> turtle climbing up the tree okay so one thing that'll help us out are uh, probably looking for those little messages on the ground if we find any that's that refer to dogs that's probably what we want or if we just see the see the blue turtles hanging out I'm just kind of randomly running around riding around this area because I don't think that they're gonna put them anywhere other than this big raised plateau this is Probably, probably the limits of where they're going to put those. Honestly, I'm just having a good old time hanging out with y'all, just riding around. <laughs> right, right, yeah. 
Do you imagine those kind of messages in Breath of the Wild about Koroks? I would love to see if they have a, you know, similar message in, uh, or a similar uh, mechanic in Breath of the Wild 2 to the Koroks, but do something, you know, have more dialogue, have more uh, little messages that they send. Little, little silly things, because after the first couple, I think it might be the same for every single one, you know? Uh, the Koroks say, like, the same thing. Haha, you found me! And then give you a little Korok seed. It's cute. It's a nice little, nice little thing, but... In the, um... It was like a total of 990, I believe. Korok seeds. That is a lot to write, to be fair. And I'm certainly not gonna, gonna demand it. But it would be cool, wouldn't it? For everyone to say something unique. The mask, it does. Look at that. It's 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 partly hilarious and partly really upsetting. And that's what a fine line, right? Like it's a uh, it's a line that uh, the FromSoft company tends to draw really often and tends to straddle a lot. They're able to be like, this is funny, but it also it's upsetting. <laughs> it's just, it's disturbing to look at. They're like, haha. Uh, uh, I don't I, stop. I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> that like that kind of feeling, uh, like it's funny on first look, but you look at it long enough, and okay, this is really detailed. Like someone put a lot of work into it, and it, oh no, it's following me. Like I don't know if it's actually following me, but the way the, these eyes are positioned, like this is upsetting. <laughs> like yeah, they're they're man, what artistry on on display here, right? That's so cool. Right, and, and, and specifically this mask, it makes me think of, if either of you are familiar with The NeverEnding Story, the movie at least, uh, the book is fantastic as well. Uh, uh, but yeah, at the beginning of the first movie, once you get 10 or 15 minutes into it, at probably 15, um, you see the ivory tower and there are a couple uh, citizens of Fantasia just walking around and a couple of them have this kind of exactly this kind of two-faced thing about them and it uh this reminds me so much of that right oh I love the movie right Atreyu was like like our inspiration of having long hair as a kid duh <laughs> like me and my me and my older brother saw that movie and were like, I, I want long hair. I want to tray you hair. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, attacks! Uh huh, right. You know, that's interesting, uh, Clover, because I know you're from Germany, and the, the book was written by a German author. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend the book, or, or the movie, if you haven't seen either. Um, the, the book pretty much encompasses the first two movies. Honestly, I wouldn't go past the second movie. The second movie is you know, debatable to watch, honestly. It's okay, but it, it definitely goes into the corny territory. It, it it gets pretty silly. But man, that first movie, oh, I feel like it does a pretty good job of embodying the tone. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were... Uh, for, who was it? I was... Dude, I was totally off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Years, Clover's like, I'm Australian. What are you talking about? Ah... <laughs> uh, is someone else in the chat a few days ago. I'm so sorry. I got... Shoot, now I can't remember who, who it was that was saying they were German. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> uh, crap. Anyway, check it out because, dude, the, mu the movie is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of how I feel felt about the second movie. 
was that it was it was okay but not fantastic. It definitely got into that cheese ball territory. Yeah, it, it got into that made for kids, you know, territory where I feel like the first movie even though the main characters were children, um it definitely the directing of it and the writing of it definitely it felt like it came that from that like very mature and adult perspective. And man, it's really good and it really holds up well uh, these days. Like it cuz it used like all practical effects for its special effects. Um you know, it's not perfect. You can tell the creatures are like puppet based that kind of thing, but it it it, it has this really wonderful quality. I, I think of like the Lord of the Rings series, you know, the uh, Peter Jackson movies. Um, like that kind of realness that the performers bring to it. Uh, that That's kind of how I feel about the first never-ending story. And uh, like the book's fantastic. And essentially, as far as the movies go, the books, the, the, the book is like the first and second movie. Um, yeah, as far as that story goes, but yeah, that first movie, fantastic. And I, I revisit it all the time. It's really good. Uh, yeah, totally recommended. Yeah. Really, really good. What led what led us to that? What <laughs> I'm jumping, scrolling up in the chat. What even brought brought out the never ending story? Oh yeah, the faces. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's this scene in the beginning where you see all these denizens of Fantasia, and there are a couple of them that have this exact kind of two face thing, this like a uh, conjoined twin two face thing going on, and it's it's really cool. Uh, yeah, some of their just practical effects are wonderful. It's the before CGI was a thing, you had some masters of practical effects that were. Oh, hey there, A1 twins. <laughs> hey there, uh, Kyle or uh, uh, who? Dude, what's up, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, I thought it might have been Kyle, e either Kyle or David. Oh, there we go. We have T Kyle and David. Sweet. How y'all doing? Y'all also playing Elden Ring? Hold on. I, I... Dude, uh, let me show y'all real quick. I got my own, uh, I got some stickers for this channel now. One of, uh, one of the wonderful, wonderful members of the, uh, channel made these. We have, we have myself, we have Cherry, and we also have Blushing Cherry, you know. Cherry Desu. When I, when I go away to the bathroom and I get myself a drink refill, uh, you know, Cherry's there to entertain you guys. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for the raid. Yep, we are... Cool. All right, it's just, it's David on both accounts. Oh, thank you so much, man. Are you, uh, what do you, what do you, what were you playing before you raided? Yeah, right, Blade, that's what it is. It's embarrassed, Cherry. Ooh. Uh, Cherry Desu. So we're, uh, oh, cool, Dead by Daylight? Yeah, I've been playing through, been playing through Elden Ring for the past almost two solid weeks now. Oh, it's so freaking good. <laughs> oh, cool. I love the name, Wolf of the Apocalypse, like Werewolf the Apocalypse. We're currently on a little, uh, mini mission to find some uh, magic -y animals. Oh, shoot. Let's go down to this tower because we haven't gone down there yet. Actually, I don't know. Ah! I don't know if I can get down there. <laughs> well, now I'm dead. It's okay. I'm about to spawn anyway. Respawn. Dude, it... it, it, it it's really lived up to the hype. Like, really good yeah it feels like they used every second of development time between uh sekiro and this to really make it the best it can be it's really good man it's huge and it's taken 
I have spent unhealthy amounts of time <laughs> playing it. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I'm I'm still not done, but uh, I'm I'm nearing it. I feel like I might be nearing the end, but uh, yeah, it is it is fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, <laughs> it's enormous. Oh right, that's that's uh what this is telling me to find the three beasties, the great wise beasts. Oh look at that, they actually put it in the name. Great does matter in the description there. Bug ahead, therefore time for research. Okay, I got it. They're just saying there's a bug in the uh, graphics there. And being an open world game, there are of course going to be bugs. I accidentally defeated a boss in an unexpected way uh, about two days ago. I've got it in the clips. Don't watch if you don't want spoilers, but it's it's there. All right, cool. You have a great evening, uh, David. Thank you so much for the raid, and I hope... Yeah, right. People with 70-plus hours are still unlocking more math. That's about where I am. That's about right. Yeah, hope you have a great night, and I will see you later, man. Appreciate it. And again, welcome to everyone who came in for the raid. We're looking for some blue aminals. Not that it's super important to, but... We're also just talking about the never-ending story in video game... <laughs> video game history and all that kind of... All that jazz. Likely octopus. Cleric. Dragon. You know what? There is no dog here, so there better be a dog. We're going to put a dog here. Likely. <laughs> First off, dog. Uh, that would be in the enemies category. Sadly. Should be friends. <laughs> yep. Hello. Heck yeah. Ooh. Cool. A little tunnel. It's not much of a tunnel. It's just more of a, a dog ahead. There you go. Dog, 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 dog! I got to see part of the new Batman tonight. Not the whole thing. Had to leave the theater early, sadly. But, yeah, I want to see the rest of it. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, just saying I, I want to see the rest of it. Yep. Yep, Clover. German Clover over there. There's someone in my chat. Not not currently. Who Who is German? I, I just can't remember who it was. Darn it. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one with uh, Robert Pattinson. Right. I do want to finish it. Went to the movie theater. Sadly, had to leave a little early. About, like, halfway through. It's like, ah, oh well. I'll come back and see you later. Do want to finish it, though, because I it, it's a cool direction. It's, an, it's a neat direction they decided to go in. I do want to see the conclusion. It's like, I think I see where you're going for with this, like, stylistically. Okay, but yeah. I, 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 other than that, I'm not gonna say anything else, because that could be that could be spoiler spoiler territory, and I'm not gonna say what you should expect emotionally or story wise, because mm -mm, other both of those things can be considered spoilers. Oh, that's neat. We haven't been over there yet, or no, that might have been where we came from. 
but also we haven't been over here since we uh, approached that tower. Which means there could be uh, some of those blue animals here. If not, like, I'll, I'll just search around for an another couple minutes. There is no rush to find these things. But I do want to finish... Uh, another set of objectives. I've been at this for about two hours. I usually go for about four. So I'll probably keep playing for a bit. Not expecting you know, anyone else to stay up with me, but just... Letting you know how how long I tend to stay up. I have a uh, an improv audition to go to tomorrow, so that should be fun. Oh, hello! Ah! Oh no, that's awful. The theater flooded. down there that's too far of a giraffe oh well, thank you I'm not expecting to uh, get cast for the uh, for the regulars essentially it's like it's uh, it's one of those things where they're casting for folks who would be regularly consistently showing up for the uh, improv troupe and I'm not necessarily expecting to, uh, because they tend to... This this will be my first audition for that kind of thing. And uh, usually it takes people several tries, traditionally, to get in. Uh, I, I think part of it is them being like, oh, are you committed? You know, do you, actually, do you want to actually be a part of this? Well, you know, pay your dues. You know, try several times. So this will be my first attempt. Uh, and... For me, it's just going to be a fun time, you know? Just have your funnest there. Do your best, have a fun old time. If I get in, wow, surprises, surprises. But if I don't, yeah, not a big deal. I'm going to still have fun. I'm already a part of uh, my local uh, branch of the improvisation company. It's the same company, uh, Unexpected Productions, up in the Seattle area. But I'm... Uh, one of the offshoot branches it, it's still part of the same company but yeah uh just further out from uh, seattle proper so i figure i'd yeah might as well try for the uh for the uh oh, interesting one of my messages got a got appraised might as well try to try out for the uh city troop which i when i first started out in the area uh, that's mainly where I performed, but then when we moved out to where we are now, I, uh, I was there for the start of this, uh, offshoot company. Yeah, if I don't get it, it's fine. I'll be okay. I'll live. I'll just cry for 17 nights and then be okay. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'll be just fine. Like the, I think honestly, the the thing that mo what makes me most uh, nervous is that like if I end up actually getting it, then that would just be more commitment, you know. That's I think that's honestly the mo the biggest thing that I'm worried about, which I I'm trying to work through to not to make me not do my best you know I want to do my best I always want to show up as my best but there there is that concern of like okay things are going to change and make me more busy in my life if I do get this which is cool but it's also a oh I don't want to be more busy that kind of feeling you know <sighs> so it's that little bit of a hill of you know challenging yourself to overcome that and be like you know what that opens up more opportunities if you do get it. So it, at the very least, you got to do your best. 
yeah, that's what it is. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> Shoot, can't find the other dogs. Where are those other dogs? That's alright, there's no real need to uh, hang out up in this area anymore. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes, the song of bread. Bread, bread, bread. I love bread. It's all in my head. Where is my fr best friend, Ned? Give me some cred. My mom's name's Fred. Won't you give me a shred of bread? I dread to think what would be what would happen if that song were to be made. In fact, enough said. All right, I can't find any of the other turtles. Just looking for them this way. I think I'll move on. All right, let's go. Well, cool. Now I can easily warp up to this area. That's really helpful. And I'm going to put a couple animal marks just to um, remind myself later that I know what those are. Just saying there are some magic-y animals up here to find at another time. Okay. Okay, cool. I know what I want to do then. I'm going to try to find my way to Mikola's Needle. Let's see. Okay. One moment, I'm just looking at the uh, guide over here real quick. Gallery, reload the area, shot the nice one. Yeah, north of the edge of Gaven Hill. Okay, cool. Now I know where to go. In this area somewhere, in this orangey area. Want to go to the air tree gazing plateau? There it is. The air tree gazing heel. Yeah, the guide, right? Mmm, bread. You might find a beheaded bread, a, a he breaded bed. As, as it is super late. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for hanging out, Tactics Lion. I hope you have a wonderful night. This was a whole lot of fun. And I will see you next time, all right? All right. Bye-bye. Cool. So we're going to go... place. Reload the air and return to the shop. North to the air tree gazing hill. Okay. We're gonna go north of here. Should be a lady we need to talk to. Oh, fun! <laughs> I forgot. I totally forgot about the chicken parm song. I'll have to find a video of the way to... If you wouldn't mind, like... Feel free any time to like post the uh, like timestamp of that video or something. Uh, you know, on a YouTube video, you can right click and be like, uh, copy the video link at the current time. Feel free to do that because I can't remember. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so sorry. So many songs. So, it's a wide history of 
music and songs that have gone through my head and got my own memory problems. <laughs> it's like a river. Some washes in, some washes out. Oh, cool. Awesome. Do you remember what part in the video it was? Was it during, like, Papyrus's date part or something? Because I, I, can, I can look it up myself. Because now I'm curious. I want to know what the Parmesan, <laughs> the chicken farm song was. Chicken farm. Where do you get it? It's on the farm. Don't have alarm. You gotta wear yourself a garment when you eat yourself some chicken parm. So I think she should be this direction somewhere. <sighs> After sparring Muppet. Cool. I sang it to the to the spider dance. <laughs> cool. Dun 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 chicken parm. Ba -ba 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 -da -ba. Awesome. That sounds wonderful. We're gonna have to look it up. I'm so glad that it stuck with you. <laughs> that's, that's so cool. That made my day hearing that. Oh. I'm pretty sure I've been in here. I'm gonna touch this save point. Okay, yes, I've been in here. If I sit down immediately at the save point, that means I've been there. If I stand up and touch it, that means I've not been here. Be wary of lightning. Hmm. Let's see, I'm pretty sure the item that I need should be Valkyrie's prosthesis. It's a prosthetic arm. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. So it may not be located just north of the Air Tree Gazing Hill. Grace. Mm. Place can give up. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to take a warp right there. Okay, then. I am gonna make a chicken farm, chicken farm, chicken farm. I am gonna make a chicken farm and feed it to, to feed it to my mommy mom. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd say. Oh, there you are. There she is. That's who I'm looking for. Hey, Millicent. Ah, we meet again. Hello, Mum. It's been smooth sailing for me. The Scarlet Rot has stilled since last we met. As such, I've been able to continue my journey. Though rather vexingly, I realized that if I still had my sword arm, I could have aided you in battle. I got you. I got you. Here you go. Have a prosthesis. Giving me this arm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I am in your debt yet again. I got you, sis. If the arm serves well enough, it might be possible for me to wield a sword again. Heck yeah. Just like, uh, millennia. If the arm serves, it might be possible. For Perhaps then I can aid you in battle. All right, cool. So we did that. Now, where to after the moon? Ba, 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 ba. Mm hmm. Alright, cool. Now I know where to go. Windmill Heights. Bam. It's like no telling where these NPCs are, NPCs are gonna show up. Alright, I'm gonna listen to this real quick. Let's see. And welcome to oh shoot! It didn't go to the uh, the point that you're talking about. Uh, so what you do? Oh, it's three hours, four hours, and three minutes. Okay, 
Let me uh, take a look. There we go. Chicken parm. Wants to make some chicken parm. Chicken parm, chicken parmesan. And when he wants to make that chicken parm, I want to share it with my mommy, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, that's a wonderful memory. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for reintroducing to me to that. I want to make it for my mommy mom. Want to make some chicken parm, chicken parm, chicken parm. Chicken parm, chicken parm, gotta make that chicken parm. <laughs> you know what? I still haven't learned how to make chicken parm. And I haven't made it for my mommy mom yet. <laughs> I probably should. I like chicken parm a lot. I love me some chicken parm. It's one of them. That's a very good meal. I probably should. One of these days. That want is still there. <laughs> but I just haven't done it. I can definitely take my mom out for chicken parm. I know. I know. My my husband make, does most of the cooking. It's, uh... He's 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 a fantastic chef. I, I do the cleaning to be fair, which is a chore in and of itself. And he loves to cook. He absolutely like it's a passion of his. But uh, yeah. Sadly, that's that's uh. I can't. So here's the thing. You know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, my husband Sean. I've been married for eight years. Yeah, something like that. I think that sounds right. But, uh, yeah, like, Sean's got, I'm old. <laughs> You're old. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I guess. I'm 33. I guess that's old. You know what? That's experienced. That's wizened. Yeah. No, you kids! I told you there was gold in them mines. They all laughed at me. They all laughed at me. But I told them, I told them there was gold in them mines. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Sean has that, has that passion has that love of cooking that I just don't, sadly don't have. You know how some people, just like with any artistic pursuit, like uh, like drawing, painting, sculpting, anything like that, it's just a, like for me with music, you know, I, I have a, I just need to, <laughs> that's a weird way to put it, I just have to vomit my, <laughs> my, my feelings onto the earth, and that's music for me. That's lyric writing and singing and all that good stuff. For some people, it's drawing or it's painting or it's whatever their passion is. Cooking. Um, I'm trying to think of other forms of art, but my brain is blanking right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, you just you have a you have a want and need to just get it out there in some way. <gasps> And, like, I'll, I'll just walk around the house just singing, you know, singing to myself, singing to my dog, uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, so I, like, I think Sean has that gift of, of, of artistic, the culinary pursuit. So his, his ability to cook, oh, my God, I'm so lucky. <laughs> like, I'm so fortunate to have him in my life, because, like... Most of the meals I cook for my... I can make breakfast. I can make bacon and eggs. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at that. But, uh... It always feels like work to me. Where 
for some people it feels like a pursuit you know a like oh, I want to I, I want to make this I want to I want to dress this plate and just make it oh look what I did oh look at that look how beautiful it looks it's just mm, it's cooked the perfect way and it's it's presented the best way it can be oh look what I did enjoy this now you can appreciate it too I can I can do that with music he can do that with food Oh, I'm so lucky. I'm so, I'm so lucky to have him in my life that he enjoys doing that with food. Uh, because I would just be cooking chicken tenders and fries most most days. Because that's pretty much what I make myself for lunch most days. I'm, I'm so easy to please with food. Like, most of the meals I make for myself, I just put chicken, chicken tendies and fries on, on the oven on on the uh what do you call it the whatever the thing you put in the oven the oven tray the <laughs> take the take the non-stick aluminum foil and put it on the tray and then put the chicken tendies and the french fries on that and then well i guess you guys might call them crisps they're not crispy what are you talking about those ain't crispy <laughs> Uh, never mind, you don't call them crispy, you call them chips. Right. You know what? <laughs> chips, crackers, crisps. Like, I feel like our languages, our, our, our languages got them all jumbled up. <laughs> we, we, and cookies. Cookies too, y'all don't even use cookies. At least, at least, I don't know if it's the same in Australia, but it, it is in, like, uh, Europe, right? They say, uh, they say crisps, right? For, uh, for cookies. We say cookies for the sweet ones. And, uh, when it comes to fries, they call them, um, they call them chips. Fish and chips. How is that chips? They don't chip off. They're, <laughs> they're, they're meaty. <laughs> like our fries we call them french fries or just fries uh they're like oh you bite into them and they're like they're not chippy they don't chip off from one another they 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 peel off like meat you know <laughs> uh, so yeah <laughs> so that's pretty much that's pretty much what i make myself i, I just put those in an oven for half an hour like ah, oh, that's heaven, and it's just easy to please that way. But oh my god, my husband makes makes real food. Oh, uh, and I am so jealous in the morning because like we wake up at different times in the morning, and uh, he makes a decent like English breakfast with the hash browns. And the uh, and the eggs and the whatever else, whatever kind of meat he's got. Usually it's some kind of sausage. Oh, I'm so jealous. I make myself cereal and milk. <laughs> Occasionally I make eggs and eggs and um, bacon when I'm feeling fancy. When I'm really feeling like respecting myself. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, you know. When I'm really feel, feeling like, you know, treating myself right, I'll make myself some, like, eggs and bacon. And, you know, that's nothing against people who are vegan or vegetarian. You know, make whatever you like, whatever whatever is good for your body. Like, I bet just a straight-up fried, like, pan-seared mushroom breakfast with some oil. Oh, my God, that'd be great. But uh, for me, because I do eat meat, uh, yeah, bacon and eggs. Uh, and that's a very nice, healthy breakfast. Two bacon, two eggs. Mm. Occasionally, you know, occasionally some toast. Which, what I do is I, I just put the put the bread in the pan and just mix that around in the bacon and egg grease. Oh, yeah. Put some jelly on top of that. And sometimes, you know, I take those, I take those fried eggs, put some salsa on that or some hot sauce. Ah. Oh. And not too hot because I've got a weak southern palate. <laughs> Anything above mashed potatoes is too hot for me. But uh, like once you go start going south of the border, it's too hot. 
Uh, but like Tabasco, that's like the that's like the white boy hot. Like that's like that's the kind of hot that I can handle. But if you you start getting into habanero territory. Uh uh, that's too hot. I'm sorry. I'm weak in that department. But uh. Oh my god, yeah, some mmm sauce on those eggs. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. That's so good. Yeah, you call you guys call uh jello uh jelly. Yeah, fair enough. You know that that's an easy enough translation. You call jelly jam. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Like inter cause I'm gonna read your little description. Fries equals chips. Potato chips equals chips. See? This is just milk equals chips, bread equals chips. I don't know. See, I froze myself out of, of frustration, out of, <laughs> out of not understanding your culture. <laughs> See, you get it. You're, you're as you're as pale face as I am. Apparently, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you look like, but <laughs> like Tabasco's too hot. That's how I feel. Like, oh, I'm so I'm such a white boy. I'm like, <laughs> I can't take the spicy. <laughs> my, my southern. Like, and I don't I don't live in the south anymore. And I say the south, meaning the the below the Bible Belt of of America, meaning like I grew up in Alabama, Mississippi. Uh, and our spicy was Tabasco sauce. <laughs> you talk to anybody from like, from like. Uh, Mexico or below, they're like they'll laugh your head off. Like you, are you kidding me? That's your, your Tabasco is your spicy. Oh my god! Try this. Try just a little pinch of this, and your my head's gonna light on fire because it's so hot. Ah, uh, funny. And like, it's 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 interesting because like that. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but this is what I've come to understand. Like, appreciating that really spicy palate can actually really help you in the hotter climate if you're used to working outside in the sun. Like, uh, and I could be totally wrong about this. Please don't take my word as gospel on this because I'm a noob. Uh, but from what I understand is, like, you, you eat the spicy stuff and it helps your sweat glands produce sweat, you know? And so when you're outside working, working in the sun, uh, you're getting that natural, uh, you know, it it's helping you condition yourself, essentially. You're, like, air conditioning your, yourself with all that sweat. Um, I'm not sure how much it works, how well it works for, uh, like, folks like me who are very, like, Irish pale. <laughs> you know? I've gotten very, I've gotten very white. If, if, I st if I stand out in the sun for ten minutes, I'm going to get a sunburn. I'm, I don't tan. I get red. I get burnt. <laughs> But like for folks with like a more, with like a darker complexion, that can that can definitely help. From what I understand, like you you take the hot food and like you sweat more and ah yeah that feels good. I, if I'm like working outside, uh, so that's cool. That's something I'd like to be able to have. I'd like to be able to eat a hot pepper and, <laughs> and enjoy the sun. But no, I gotta hide under the umbrella when I go to the beach <laughs> because I'm too white. It's too white, too susceptible to the heat. Mm. I gotta put on so much sunscreen. I gotta look like Ronald McDonald when I put on sunscreen. Uh, oh my gosh. It's true. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> uh, oh good, there she is. There's the lady we're looking for. We gave her the prosthetic arm. Look at her. She's wearing it. Cool. Ah, oh, we meet yet again. The arm you gave me truly is a thing of wonder. It feels just like my own. Even handling a sword. Perhaps it is foolish to say this to you of all people, but I am sure of my skill with the sword. Thus, I would have you call upon me in battle, should you ever have the need. Cool, friend. Yes, ma'am. I would have you call upon me and it is the only way that I can express my thanks. Cool. All right, so I think that's all she's going to say. Just repeated her dialogue a little bit. So let's see where to go next. We want to... Not that one. Uh, yes, okay. Ba -ba 
ba, ba, ba. Okay. She will now move to the ancient Snow Valley ruins. Cool. So we're going to go around this area. Let's see. Ancient Snow Valley ruins. Where are you at? At the mountaintop of giants. Lady. Hello, lady. What art thou? Okay. It's possible I haven't found the ruins that they're talking about in this guide. Oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Who knows? We've never been in the same place at the same time, perhaps with the same person. Where is this? So that's Snow Valley Ruins Overlook. I'm looking for the, uh... <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Oh my god, that's so cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I feel honored. Alright, let's see, let's see. I'm supposed to go to a place called the Snow Valley Ruins. Ancient Snow Valley Ruins Graves at the Mountaintop of the Giants. Huh. Well, darn. Where is that? Oh, 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 oh. There it is. Cool. Right on. <laughs> cool. Mm, now I want some chicken parm. That sounds so good. Oh, there she is. She, she right there. What's up? To think we'd meet in such a place. What's up, friend? What could your purpose possibly? No. I know well enough who you are. And what I know is good enough for me. Call upon me again mm -hmm. in battle. Should you have the need? Okay, so she's just moving from place to place. I'm searching for a fort to the north of the ruins. Cool. I heard the master of the fort was given a medallion that allowed him to visit the Halig tree. Indeed, I believe that is where Melania will be found. The Halig tree is hidden somewhere in these northern lands. Okay. I'm searching for a fort to the... I heard... Nope. Oh, cool. So now I know where she's going next. Thankfully, we've explored most of the map. Mmm, chicken parm. Oh, now I'm so hungry. <laughs> there you are. There you are, friend. Again we meet. Mmm, salad. Oh, good choice. Our purposes are aligned. Mm. In which case, allow me to explain myself. I am of Melania's blood. Oh. But in what capacity, I know not. I could be sister, daughter, or an offshoot. Whatever the case, though. Melania. I'm certain of a kinship between us. Yeah. We fought Melania. Um, it might have been yesterday. I have uh, one of my videos shows me fighting her, and we ended up getting a wonderful glitch, right? Yeah. For those who didn't watch it, who were watching this after the fact. But yeah. That was pretty awesome. There is something I must return to Melania. Oh, really? The will that was once her own, the dignity, the sense of self, 
that allowed her to resist the call of the Scarlet Rot, the mm, prize she abandoned, to meet Radan's measure. Okay. There is something alluring right. to dignity. Yes, ma'am. Now. Okay. All right, cool. I defeated the boss that I need to to have her appear to the next spot. Once the player has defeated the mini boss in the quest to travel to Etta Grace, there will be a summon sign. Let's play with summon. Okay, cool. This is where we need to go. Uh, I like. There's a certain, there's a certain um, salad dressing. It's like a, um, I want to say it's like an East Asian peanut-based uh, dressing. It's really good. Or no, it is a sesame dressing. That's what it is. Oh, so good. Yeah, the sesame dressing. I don't, I don't remember what it is specifically called, but uh, several mainline uh salad dressing companies make it ah oh, it's so good sesame dressing i like sesame seeds okay so we want to go up this way and we yeah i think we're good i think we're pretty solid in what we have equipped making a salad's messy yeah yeah I guess that's what they call it, tossing a salad. You're just kind of tossing stuff in there. Piece, bits and pieces. This is all chunks of things, isn't it? It's good, though. At the very least, all those pieces can be picked at with a fork. Get out of here, Betty. Hey, you went up that way this time. Usually, they walk backwards. Ah! Okay, so there was a really tough boss in this area that we did defeat, and now there should be a thing for us. There it is. There it is on the other side. Who, who would find this? <laughs> The fact that they, these are in such random places, of course they want you to look at the internet for this. Come on. Like, it, it feels like this is one of the, uh, mm, small group, blue trash bin, salad kit, and single tiny plastic. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be chaotic. So, one of the justifications for the abstractness of the, um, of FromSoft's games that I've heard that I kind of appreciate, maybe just maybe partly because I tend to use guides at a certain point in the games, is that it seems like the FromSoft games very much encourage people to uh, like help each other. Like it seems to be a community effort, right, to get through them and to uh, to figure out what's next and whatever journey in the game you're going for whether that be in the little uh, messages people leave or it could or you know looking up walkthroughs that kind of thing like it really does seem to be a uh, a uh, like a big community effort with these games and yeah I appreciate that outlook I mean it it Helps me justify looking up walkthroughs at this point in the game. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, y you see these really abstract points of, uh, like a journey starting and ending and all the points in between. Like, not all of them, not all of them are immediately apparent. Like, <clears throat> I don't know why Nefeli Lu went to the village of the... Uh, Albernax or whatever it is. 
and then went to the bottom floor of the round table hold, but she did. So like, it's it's hard to it's hard to justify that, but like, yeah, yeah, it definitely helps to have to look this kind of stuff up and to like have people's messages. A lot of the secrets that I found through the game, through most of the game, I might not have found if not for the messages on the ground saying try the hidden wall or look down or look up that kind of thing the bacon in the salad tastes disgusting oh bad bacon be summoned to assist Millicent let's do this being summoned by her oh boy oh boy and I can't summon my buddies either all right, let's do this. Hand to hand. Millie, no! Millie, no! Millie! Ouch! Ah. Ow! I'm dead. <laughs> oh, no. I died. That was quick. Fine. Okay. That's how you get to play this. Oh, good! It puts me right here. Perfect. I can just be resummoned over and over again without having to walk. Easy. Have a moon. Enjoy the moon. Yes. Have more moon. Have even more moon. Oh, I totally did not. Ah! Oh, I... ah! Don't kill Millie. Yes, Millie. Get him. Get him. Get him. Yes. We got two. No, don't hurt Millie. Yes. Who's next? Did we get them all? Yeah! Millicent's sisters defeated. Returning to your world. Have the moon. Enjoy that moon. Rotten winged sword insignia. Let's see what that does. Greatly raises attack power with successive attacks. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's awesome. A talisman depicting a raised prosthetic blade. An honor bestowed upon the Valkyries who serve the goddess of rot. Greatly raises attack power with, with successive attacks. The four sisters were born in the swamp of Aeonia and came to the Halic Tree under the Aegis of Gallery. And yet, those buds were doomed to never blossom. Huh. Well, Gallery, we know who Gallery is. That's interesting. The guy who healed Millicent, who we just helped defeat her four sisters. It seems like they were trained by the man who healed Millicent. Huh. It almost, hmm. There's so much story there that's untold. It almost seems like he felt some responsibility to help the fifth sister in her time of need. I wonder if he knew or understood that she was going to take out the her other four sisters who he trained. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, no problem. You're very welcome. Okay, so after that's done, once completed, the player can reset the area again and she'll be nearby. Cool. All right, so we'll go back to that drainage spot and then run back here. Cool. Gotcha. Thanks, Millie. You want the moon? How about I add? 
we'll lasso a rope that uh, up there and grab it for you. And pull it down for you. I've never actually seen that movie. Bye, buddy. Mmm. Oh, chicken. Yes. Chicken sounds good. Chicken's always good. I love this skin. I love chicken skin. <laughs> oh, that sounds horrible to folks who were vegan or vegetarian. I'm sorry. But, yeah, it's something I love. It's just the tastiest part. Mmm. Hey, Millie. Hello, friend. Thank you for lending your hand. Without your help, I could not have defeated that quartet. I feel as if I've been in your debt from beginning to end. Thank you. With your help, I was able to live as my own person. If only in passing. But this is where things end. I pause to even tell you. you up to this that if I am to flower into something other than myself I would rather rot into nothingness as I am Millie. please let me pass a loop the scarlet rot rides now where's mm -hmm. the river soon I won't be more than a mound of flesh curse laden untouchable a thing to bring me home. Oh, funny. What do these messages yes. say? The uh, yes, ma'am. Oh. Just want to read the messages. Behold, friend. Friendship, oh friendship. No, oh, stop it! I don't want to talk to her again. I'm just trying to read the message. There we go. Offer flower. Tarnished. Why? Why, Millie? Woohoo! Alright, guess we're going back to the drainage channel and next time we come back here I think she's gonna be gone. Oh really. Mmm, a chicken chunk. Mmm. That sounds good. That chunk of chicken. I'm gonna offer this fellow the moon. Can. Nope. Go away. Bye bye. It wouldn't let me shoot it at him. I couldn't lock on. Not until I hit him. Rest in peace. Pour one out for you. Rest well, Millicent. So now we want to go to here. I think this is the spot. If not, it's close by. Return the unalloyed gold needle. And now we have Michaela's needle. Or Mikola's needle. Sweet. Wonderful. Now that would help us get another... Uh, presumably another ending. <sighs> Sad. <laughs> oh, that's neat. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, don't don't let me interrupt your dinner if you're uh, having dinner at the table. Enjoy. Huh. One of the unalloyed gold needles that Mikola crafted to ward away the meddling of outer gods. <laughs> yeah. Capable of subduing the flame of frenzy if inherited. 
allowing one to cheat fate and avoid becoming the Lord of Frenzied Flame. However, the needle is yet unfinished and can only be used in the heart of the storm, beyond time said to be found in Faramazola. All right, well, yeah, I certainly don't want to interrupt mealtime. I mean, I'm going to be here for another hour, I assume. So I'm, I'm still going to be here. Speaking of which, I gotta actually use the restroom, so I'll be back anyway. Enjoy foodie times. Oh, nice. That's cool. Oh, that's fun. Yep, sir. I was wearing that hat. Yippers. It's a comfy hat. I really like it. My hatty hat. Okay, where to now? Where to? Yeah, I like it. So now we have this. We have this needle to make sure it 
the way I want to use it is the correct way. Messages was thumbs up or down. Fun. So, uh, we can have a video board of us playing a certain game. Okay. I guess I'll have to look that one up later. Um, uh, fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it, get, it can get pretty cold up here. We get snow. We sometimes get snow in February. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I imagine. It's very hot down there. Oh, 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 well, I, I got the thing I need for one of these endings. But... That's... Three possible endings, I think. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Was it was it there in Australia that you saw snow? That's pretty cool if that happened. Froze. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm if I'm looking off to the side, it's because I'm reading uh, this uh, process here, and I want to make sure I don't mess up because it's pretty specific. Oh, nice. So is it a mountain? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, that's cool that you did get to experience snow. All right. Yeah. Nice. Well, I know that, um... I think the oldest living organisms are in Shark Bay, Australia. Which is in the northwest ish. Like the west to northwest region of the continent. It's like these, um. Like barnacle y. It's, it's these underwater things that are right off the coast. Um. It's like a. It's a thing I learned in college. Uh. When we were studying. The, like ancient animals and like fossils and stuff and yeah shark bay is home to the uh to like the oldest living organisms northwest yeah northern territory right something like that so yeah and yeah yeah you're not allowed to touch them or anything but they're there but it, yeah like it's supposed to be like yeah you you have to take a trip 
to get out there. Like, it'd be, it's, you have to go through, yeah. I got a degree in geology. Earth science. Earth and water. I mean, water is part of the earth, but yeah. Hmm. Okay. I feel like this isn't specific enough. These things that, uh, like, I'm trying to... I'm trying to have all the things here. Alright. Looks like I have access to about three or four out of the six endings right now. At least four, I think four. Yeah. And I'd love to be able to have all of them if I can. Though one of them's gonna have to be like permanently gone if I do the thing I'm uh, attempting to do, and that's fine, but I, I need to know that I can actually get rid of it. It's possible there's one that I've uh, missed out on. But, um. Let's see. Oh. Reach the teleporter right card. The last one, then go back into the building and up the stairs. Fog door. There. What? <laughs> German science. Sim would know. Okay. Heading forwards, going down every staircase and people across. Drop down. Go towards the room with the two clean rock knights. Witness for entering the jungle with a railing. Down one level, turn around. Then there's a black room right under the railing, and you will find the body. Huh. Okay. Sure. I'm looking for uh, two items. Yeah, I figured you were referencing Sim with the German science thing. Hurts, skiants. Right. From this room, keep heading forward, going down every staircase you come across. Drop down and head towards the room with two knights inside. But instead of entering, jump over the railing. Okay. So we're going to go down every single staircase we find going in this direction. Until we come to a room with two knights inside of it. But instead of going inside... We will drop, jump over the railing, I believe. Oh, that would be the one. Okay. Is this, is this, this? oh, there we go. <laughs> cool. Yep, didn't discover this place before. All right. There you are. <laughs> Cool. Good stuff. Booyah. Hey, I see you over there. I'm not going to go down there, though. I'm going to go back to that room. Yes, we do. That we do. We love Sim. Looks like I'm wearing a plant pot on my head. It does. Uh, check this out, though. I can, uh, because this is a sorcerer style of a helmet. There's a specific gesture that I can make it light up. Watch this. Oh! <laughs> cool. Neat. I think all... I think many of the sorcerer helmets do that. And there are several of them. I'll show you. There's this one, there's that one, 
There's, of course, that one. There's this one, and that one, and then that one. That one's a tiny one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just with that gesture, though. Yeah, my favorite is still probably the wolf one, the wolf mask. It's not an actual wolf head, but it's just modeled after Bly, the, the half-wolf man. Oh no! Still lost the part of your stand-up stand fan. Alright, let's see, let's see. There should be another one starting from this same area, I think. Uh, into the stairs with two crossbowmen above you. Jump onto the arch. Back to the crimson teardrop square. Head, uh, let's see, jump onto the arch to the right and head and, and hop onto the platform to the left. The crimson teardrop square. To the left should be a room with clean rot night and a chest containing clean rot night. Then lay ashes. Hop onto the arch. Head west. And follow it up the balcony. Follow the balcony to its end, and the item we found on the body sitting in the chair looking down at the bell. Ballista. Shoot you avatar. Okay. Well, this is gonna be harder. It's from the same position, but the directions are crazy. Two crossbowmen above you. Jump onto the arch. Okay. Oh, no! I'm not that tall at all. Uh, I'm 5'9". My family's not full of tall people. Alright, I believe we go this way. I've, I've been told they have a tall energy about me. But no, I'm not. I'm not that tall. Oh, maybe it's my, uh, maybe it's my voice or my. Oh, I think it might have been this guy. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's my voice or my. Uh... Don't mean to. Don't don't mean to be. Uh, arrogant or anything or me. But maybe it's my, like, the kind of confidence I exude or something. But, yeah. I've, I've heard that I have a... I've got a tall energy. <laughs> maybe it's from having five siblings. Maybe it's growing up... Growing up in uh, two houses with uh, five other siblings. Uh, you have to... You have to learn to be... Somewhat competent or something. Okay, I think this is the spot... Huh. Yep. Just follow up the balcony bar. Yeah. So we already got this one. We don't need this one. Volcano Manor would be another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot. That I do. Okay, so there's one more of these that I need to find. And it starts in this area, the Volcano Manor. Yeah, <laughs> glad you only have two. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, my folks got divorced when I was very little. 
and uh, my mom has three boys, so me and my two brothers, I'm the middle child there. And then my dad went off to have three other children uh, who were all younger than me. Uh, so I mostly grew up in a, in a house with, uh, at least for the first part of my uh, childhood, I grew up in a house with uh, an older and a younger brother. Yeah, it happens. You know, people grow apart. It's, it sucks, but you know, it was probably better that they uh, separated because they just weren't compatible. I think at that point, it was too much, too much not good between them. And they both found, thankfully, they both found people uh, they loved and who loved them. Uh, my stepdad, and my stepmom are wonderful people. Yes, I'm the second oldest of uh, the six siblings in total. Okay, so I should be able to get in here. But, huh. I think I need to join you guys or something. We rarely receive visitors, but the vault fascinating. And not unlike another guest we had long ago. Hmm. So, tarnished. Have you ever harbored doubts about the burden of grace and the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers? If you have, why not join the Volcano Manor and fight with us, rise with us, against the Erd Tree? Hmm. I do want to check this out. I want to make sure... want to join it, or do I not? I'm gonna look through their little... Hmm. Okay. this up later <laughs> yeah ooh, volcano mansion yeah scared yeah it's got creepy music they seem very devious the way they're acting so that yeah that's why I'm looking at uh... hmm, hmm. get there and then what okay to reach the final boss this time. Meet various assassinations. Do not be surprised to have access to mount top of the giant. Ba -ba -ba. Hmm. Uh. Oh, good. You fixed your fan. Cool. Ah, I think I'll have to do more research on this before I decide to join or not join. Hmm. It sounds like a, uh, um, Link to the Past dungeon track, the music does. Oh, yay! <laughs> yay, your dad sounds awesome. <laughs> your dad likes Night in the Woods, too? Awesome. Very cool. Well, 
junk. Jeez. Well, jeez. Hmm. Yep, I might have to pass on the rest of this for now and come back at another time. Hmm. Oh, it should be noted that defeating the boss is first before completing the letter replaced last two battles by carrying out. Ah, yes! He called your May mask amazing. Perfect. So, <laughs> that's awesome. Well done. Well done, Dad. It's a good pun. Wonderful. Well, I mean, at least he didn't call your, um... Andy mask embarrassing. That's that's his name, right? Did I get that right? I'm, shoot, I'm, I'm no, my friend's name is Andy. <laughs> I've got a friend whose name is Andy Bear. His last name is Bear. Uh, it's spelled like B A R E. So I'm thinking of Angus. Yeah, they're both A names. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that you're confused because I said the wrong name. <laughs> yes, Angus. At least you didn't call your Angus mask unbearable. Yeah, just, you know, strike that first part and pretend like I made a good pun the first time. <laughs> uh. Yep. That's what I meant. Angus, not Andy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Cool. Well, that's fantastic. Very cool. Oh, yep. It's starting to get late here. I think I'm going to call it. Yep. It's not the full hour that I was going to spend, but I, I feel like I got to do more research before I decide to uh, join this volcano manor. Is it going to be an irreversible bad thing, or is it going to be something that I can do okay without messing too much with the ending? But yeah, I'll have to look up later. Yeah, cool. Greg is cool, okay? <sighs> All right. Well, cool, this has been awesome. Thank you for hanging out, Clover, and everyone else who hung out today. I appreciate y'all all so much. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're starting to come near the, at least the, you know, end of the story. Yeah, Greg rules, okay? Yeah, that's what it is. That's it. Yeah, we'll get there soon, I think. And, uh, yeah. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Have a wonderful weekend. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye for now.